Hey there, everyone. Welcome back. All right, so I'm going to be doing a tutorial for you guys on something you really wanted to see, but I thought I would show off this amazing new electric fireplace that is now behind my, um, my art desk. Isn't it cool? It's so cool. I love it. I'm so excited about this. I can't even tell you how how much of a difference it makes. It's so inspiring. It changes color. It even heats up the room. If I want to add, um, if I want to put the heater on, it is the coolest thing. And thank you so much for Armani Fireplaces for getting this amazing creature into my art studio. I am really thrilled with it. I love it. It is huge. And I don't know if you guys can totally see, but it goes all the way across my entire studio here. And it just, it just has the nice um, nicest ambiance ever. So I just wanted to show it off and let you know that the um, studio is ever changing. Of course, always new things happening. Okay. So <laughs> we're all back to business. So I'm going to get out one of the finished cityscapes that I did recently. And I actually posted this one on our group page over on Facebook. I'll put a link in the description box for you guys so that you can go and join the group page. If you haven't yet, I highly recommend that you do because I give you all kinds of really cool tips and tricks on how to do these things. And I said that I would, you guys really wanted this as part of the, one of the upcoming tutorials. So I'm going to put it in the beginners watercolor class. As you know, it is ever growing. It's all inclusive. So once you get into that class, you will get all the additional videos, um, that I have that I think that you might want to learn as a beginner. So it's a great class to get started with. It's a great gift for anyone who wants to start in watercolor. But right now we're going to do this sky here on YouTube as um, something hopefully to make you get inspired and maybe make your watercolor journey a little easier. And then I'll finish off all the details and everything in the watercolor class. So be sure to go and check that out if you want to learn more. Also, let me just remind you that all of my classes are at JacquelineJacks.com. Okay, so to get started, choose whatever blue, pink, or I would say pink or red if you like reds. But for the sky, this particular sky here, I used a yellow, a gold, a pink, or like a magenta, and a blue and this blue is a French ultra because it's got kind of like that, you know, it's not like more of the, uh, the really Royal blue. It's kind of got like that Parisian kind of beautiful, um, lavendery kind of glow to it. So it depends on what you love and what you have. You don't have to get these colors. I will give you a link to, um, to my beautiful Schmenka box over here. If you love this box, I absolutely love it. It's my favorite Schmincke thing I've ever gotten. And there were extra areas in here. So I actually added trays for all of my, um, extra ones that I like to play with. In any case, this is like the best, the wood box set is amazing. I love it. So you can either get, um, just these colors in open stock, or you can get a wood box set but I'm going to use Schmincke because I love to use Schmincke and it really does work out for stuff like this. It just is really good. It blends so well, even if you're not using the best quality paper, it's going to give you less trouble. And so that's why I re recommend it. So I took these three. This is the transparent yellow, a lemon yellow to get like the brightness, magenta instead of a red, because I really like this. Um, and magenta, this magenta is better for longevity of your painting with a you know, like usually people want to do opera rose, but opera rose, the problem with it is that it will fade over time. So it's unpredictable, but I like this magenta is really nice. And then I'm going to use French ultra and then maybe we'll pull something else. I'm not really sure. It just depends if, if you really feel like it, but I, I pre wet these so that you could see how beautiful, um, the colors are. 
and this is the thing I love working with Schmink. It's got just such an easy, easy way about it. I have two glasses of water. One is for dirty water and one is for clean water. So when I get the, to the point where my dirty water is dirty, you need one just to clean and make sure that it's very, very clean. And this brush is a great little travel brush, but I really love the brush itself. It's a Torin, what it, Tintorito. Yeah, Tintorito from Italy. I got it at Jackson's. I can give you, it's actually on my um, materials list. It's one of my favorite little travel brushes. I've got a bunch over here actually just to pull from, but I love this brush because it's just so easy to use, you know? It's the 1337. Okay, so let's set this aside so that we can pull from those. And we're going to put this up in front of my little fireplace here as a reference. I hate blocking my fireplace, but. So this was uh, the last tutorial I did on this channel. If you want to go and check out how to make your brushes work for you. This is actually just using different brushes to make different kinds of flower shapes. So if you're struggling with your flowers, then definitely roll on over and check out that video. Okay, so now this is just a basic watercolor paper. I think this one is Paul Rubens, it is. I use it for the tutorials a lot because it's 100% cotton um, but it's nothing fancy. It comes in a block and I really find it just is a really just all weather paper. It's really easy to use. I prefer arches. Arches is amazing. But for these tutorials, this is a really nice size for me to mess about with and it works out fine. And you're going to see that Schmanker really is very, very forgiving. So now to get this kind of quality in your background. You can start it one of two ways. You can wet the entire paper front and back so that it doesn't warp. Um, and I have a video up about uh, doing different washes to help you. Or you can kind of work from light to dark. So why don't we try it both ways? So I'm going to take this and literally just split this paper down so we don't even we don't have to worry about what's on the back i'm gonna do one side where we're doing the um light to dark with just a wash so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna kind of get some of my paper wet here I'm gonna take my bright lemon yellow and I'm just going to just do that like literally just kind of blend it out bam so easy now for the center I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm going to try and suck up some of this water and use like a napkin or paper towel just to do that look at that so now we've got this like outside that's kind of wet and rough and and you can see how it's just nothing fancy right just you can't really mess it up i'm going to take my golden color so this is the transparent yellow right out of here i mean you can you could do it in your ceramic if you want to but you know if you notice um when i do these i kind of do them really really rough you know if you want a more smoother kind of look then you can uh, put it into your ceramic palette first. So I'm adding a nice bit of that yellow and see how nicely that warmed it up. I can go back in and even kind of mix through some of the lemon. Now this is going to dry slightly um, less vibrant, but as you can tell right now, I seriously have some vibrancy going on here. So I have the lemon, I have my transparent. If I want to add more transparent, I can get it to be warmer. This is transparent yellow. It's a great color to have on hand just to add some warmth and texture to your yellows. 
there's a lot of different options actually that you can you can do that with okay so that's nice and wet now as you can tell paper's kind of warping a little bit but not too bad um, I can actually fix this if I want to if I get, start getting really wet with this you don't have to be this wet but I could just spray the back and if I just miss the back it's gonna straighten out now we got to put it on the water on the um, glass surface though because if I put it on anything else and of course it's gonna I didn't seal those other things so they're gonna bleed all over but it doesn't matter because I don't need them okay so next we're gonna add the pink so this is the magenta and if you take it right out of your pan and you don't mix it into your brush it's gonna be a much rougher uh, look so because the pigment isn't going to be kind of like sloshed around right so I'm going to take this little ceramic palette and this palette actually came in my Schmincke wood box set which I love so I'm gonna put this in really kind of heavy strength and not really try to liquid liquefy it because I want to work as strong as I can with my colors this here so I'm getting a lot of this color on my brush and I'm mixing it here. So now I'm going to start here adding it because I want the pink to be really, really nice and vibrant. So I'm just kind of going here knowing that I'm eventually going to blend into my blue. And now while this is wet, I'm just going to go around and add a little bit of water just so that I can blend this out. And if you notice, I didn't really wet the whole paper, right? And that's so that it doesn't travel too much. It doesn't get too carried away with me. This is a really, really rough, kind of easygoing way to do this, to get this look. And I had that little area there where it's just some white, not getting intimidated by anything. We're not we're not getting over fussy here with the wash. We're letting it be as rough as we, you know, as we feel like, because ultimately it's going to dry very, very different than what you're seeing. And say you go too far in and you want more of the yellow, then just rinse your brush, put it in some nice water and start to pick it up. So I'm picking it up, drying off my brush and I'm going to pick up some of this color just kind of bring it out like that so easy right and so now it's just going to keep blending now this is a hundred percent cotton watercolor paper it is not the quality of arches so arches is going to be even easier to use so if you're struggling right now it's probably the paper there is a little bit of blotching happening on this paper because i did not wet it the entire paper so if you want a very rough look uh then don't wet the paper first because once you wet the paper it slides over the paper a lot easier right but when you don't wet the paper you get a little bit more uh, like a rough blotchy look and I kind of really like this painterly effect so now we're gonna loosen up that center just a bit just by adding some clean water to it and if you feel that it's not got enough white in it find a clean part of your towel and just blot it away I like to kind of do it unevenly and then uh, if if you want to just blend it more you can add a little water because it's watercolor <laughs> so here I'm uh, gonna bring some of this yellow so this was a mixture of the yellow and the magenta and I'm just gonna kind of blend it through there and we're gonna leave it because it is a background wash we don't really want it to be too crazy it's pretty cool though right so far so good so this is what we got I wet the back so that it's kind of staying you know not going too crazy let's dry this because I'm gonna make a mess but that's okay that's why I have glass on my table I love to use glass on my table all right so now let's work with the blue so here's our blue this is French ultra just gonna roll my nice little brush here nice and juicy get it on my brush and let's start out on the side yeah that's nice I like that I'm gonna go real nice and dark and this is dry paper over on the side you can tell 
I'm going to go nice and dark with it, um, give it a nice good layer in the corner. And then I'm going to wet my brush and just start blending it in to the pink. And as it goes over the pink, because it's still wet, I'm getting that nice shade of purple. So again, this is, remember, the one where we don't wet the paper first. And so you can see the lines. So now I'm going to take my brush, rinse it off a little bit, put it in the plain water, and we're just going to start blending back and forth. Because, because this was not pre-wet, then of course this purple area is going to streak a lot more. But it's workable, you know, and this is where if you're using a really bad paper, it's going to pill because you have to be able to work watercolor. And if you can't work watercolor, you're not really you're not really doing watercolor. You know what I mean? You're kind of like doing the beginner thing where um, it's less forgiving and you, you can't get the right materials because you don't really want to invest in them. And that's OK. That's fine. But just know that you are struggling more than you need to. <laughs> and once you go over to the other side, you'll be like, oh, wow. So this is me uh, with a cheaper paper. And you can see I have to work it just a little bit more. But that's OK, because my the end result is I want some of these streaks in here. And that's fine. So I'm going to wash my brush off because I don't want to get rid of too much of my yellow. But I do really want some of that texture through it. I don't want it just a big sopping, big bright mess in the center there. I kind of want this to work out. So lovely, right? You can add a little more magenta as it's wet and just kind of keep blending in like this. Now, um, if we were going to do this first, this whole tutorial, of course, we would work on the bottom. So I'm going to save that for the class and just kind of keep it simple here and not get too complicated on you for YouTube. Just do this. So I'm adding more of my ultramarine, making this area darker, and I'm going to work it forward into this line here. Now, in order to graduate this, what we're going to have to do, and this is something you have to make a decision with on the fly. It has to do with your paper and your, your paint and you know how it's how it's reacting so in order to uh, do this where you don't have to let this dry and do it again we're going to take a little more of the pink wet my brush enough and i'm going to start working the pink further into the blue because i want one area here that's a mid color in between the two so I've got my blue, I'm going to have a little darker purple here, and it's going to work into the pink. And where I see like if there's a harsh line, you see how I just kind of went over it and I blended it out. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So beautiful. And that's as easy as that. I mean, even with having to do the workarounds, that's what we got. We got these beautiful, brilliant, rainbow-like backgrounds for your landscapes. And that's why I think this is going to be a perfect tutorial to do this one for our watercolor sketchbook class because the beginner sketchbook class has so many really fun tutorials to do. But I don't really know that I have anything specifically like this. And I think this would be great because wherever you travel, wherever you go, you're going to hit a really nice sunset that you want to put in your sketchbook or you want to remember or you just want to paint. So I thought this was just so easy to do. And I know it looks intimidating, but it's so easy to do. And uh, you can really be forgiving on this. And as a beginner, you don't have to get it technically completely right for it to be really effective and beautiful and be something you'll enjoy and have and be able to frame. So we're going to add this to the beginning watercolor class. And I hope you guys will come over there and take the class. I would really love to see you join. Remember, it's all inclusive. It's really inexpensive. And I do so many of these great 
uh, beginning watercolor classes in there so that you don't have to struggle. All right. If you like this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. I hope you guys enjoyed it and happy painting.